say you're an introvert and you enjoy your own alone time, but all of a sudden you find yourself in a relationship and now you have a partner and that partner asks for your help with doing things, with teamwork, with collaboration, with connection. You as an introvert might sometimes feel a need to withdraw and a need to be alone and a need to do things on your own. So how do you make peace with your independence as an introvert? And how do you learn to collaborate with and connect with another person? It's not that you don't want to have a partner, right? The introvert, otherwise you wouldn't have even ended up in this relationship to begin with, right? But still, it's difficult to overcome and to manage through your own personal needs when you are two people in a relationship, right? So let's talk about what you can do to feel more safe and more connected to other people and how you can manage these kind of things, right? So first thing you want to recognize is that, that often the independence that you experience as an introvert and the level of self-trust and self-assuredness the tendency to believe that you can take care of yourself, you can manage your own needs, you can provide for yourself, you can cook for yourself, you can give yourself what you want. That feeling can make other people around you feel as if they are useless in your life, right? So the more you move towards independence, the more you move towards making other people around you feel like they are useless to you in a sense that they can't help you, they can't answer your questions, they can give you advice, they can't talk to you, they can't tell you or to, how to think, or how to feel, or what to do. They can't be influential in your decision-making, right? So all of this can make the other person feel like they're not welcoming your life, right? And on top of that, it can make other people around you act and behave in a more anxious manner, right? So because they feel that they are useless to you in your life, and that they can't help you with cooking, with cleaning, with taking care of things because you prefer to do that yourself, well, they can feel as if, well, if I'm useless here, what if he stops liking me? What if he decides I'm not welcome here anymore? What if he realizes that I'm useless and I'm not contributing in any way? And what if he decides that, yeah, he doesn't want me anymore? And all of this can lead to a person around you becoming more clingy in the sense that they become more eager to try to prove themselves, more eager to help, more eager to connect with you, more eager to break through your shell or open, get you to open up or get you to talk or get you to listen or get you to hear them, you know. And this can make you even more want to withdraw in a sense that it makes you even more likely to feel like, oh, I don't, I feel stressed out. I feel overwhelmed. They're asking too much of me. They're demanding too much, you know, they're uh, trying to intrude my space all the time, you know, like, and I don't feel safe, you know, and it, this is the cycle that you can find yourself in, right? So what do you do to overcome this? Well, before we get into that, what's worse is that often introverts tend to have a very idealized desire for what the partner should be like, right? Because you're so independent and self-satisfied and because you have managed to provide for yourself and create a nice atmosphere for yourself and because you're comfortable in your own skin and by yourself, you might have a stronger ideal for what another person, what being in a relationship should be like. Perhaps also because you haven't been in a lot of relationships, perhaps. You've often avoided people, so you don't really know what people are like and how to manage around people and what to deal, how to deal with people's mood swings and energies and vibes and all those things, right? So you might have a very idealized image of what your ideal partner should look like in the sense that you think that it should be constantly very harmonious, peaceful, you know, they should be perfect in every regard, you know, they should be, you know, this wonderful person that will come into your life and they will provide everything that you need and they will be absolutely wonderful all the time, right? So you'll have this kind of idea in your head, right? And often it can feel as if, you're constantly putting this above the person you're in a relationship with. So you have this ideal in your head of how the person should be. Uh, and then you have them, you know, as a human being who is not perfect and who is not all those things. And of course, it can feel as if um, all those expectations are hanging in your head, right? So they are aware of this. They are, they're aware of this is what you really want. And I'm not what I, you want. I, this is what you really want. This is the ideal that you are looking for. And so often uh, when an introvert feels that uh, other people are intruding into their lives and into their space and coming into their world, 
it can be this feeling like, you know, if they should be allowed in, they should be really, really special. They have to be really, really perfect. They have to be really, really wonderful people. And if they ever say or do something that is not a part of this ideal, well, it's very easy to put up your defensive walls and to be like, you know, uh, maybe this was not right. Maybe this was not the person I wanted to be with. Maybe this wasn't, you know, the kind of relationship I was looking for. So here it's especially important that you recognize these kinds of idealizations and these kind of fantasies and how they might make it difficult for you to experience and appreciate what is in front of you, right? But ultimately, building up the ability to have healthy communication and connection in relationships is more than possible and it's something anyone can develop and learn if they put in the time and energy into it. And really what it's all about is you have to build and invest skill points into your teamwork personality tree. Yeah, you have to develop the ability to collaborate with and to connect with other people in your life. So here, what you have to do is you have to recognize that any person around you can be useful or can be interesting and can be positive to have around for a wide variety of reasons, not always the same reasons, but every single person you meet has a right to be where they are and in their space and what they are doing, as long as they respect your rights to the same, right? So every single person around you has this uh, right to live and to exist and to be. And on top of that, that person probably has something interesting to teach you, something they can tell you that you don't know. And so you have to ask yourself, what could those things be? What could I learn from other people? What could other people add to my life? How could other people contribute to me? Really, what you want to do is think about, you know, what could a partner bring to me? What is it a partner helps me feel? What is it a partner can allow me to do that I can't do alone? And of course, one realization you might have is that, no, I can do anything by myself. So I don't really need to have a partner. But here, what I want you to do is I want you to think, not can I do it myself, but should I do it myself? Really? What you want to do is you want to think about what things that I do for myself would I appreciate if somebody else started picking up and doing for me? So here it can be, you know, recognizing if there is anything in your life that you are doing right now that you don't actually enjoy doing or being or a role or responsibility that you don't really like having that you can feel comfortable letting go of to another person. For example, perhaps you don't really enjoy cooking. You do know how to cook and you do know how to do those things. But uh, perhaps that's something that another person might be able to add to your life, right? Or for example, uh, you might find that, you know, even though you can solve problems yourself, make decisions yourself, or figure things out yourself, perhaps there is something another person can bring to you in a discussion by just listening or just by hearing you out or just by asking the right questions that you can realize that you wouldn't have realized without them around. And here, recognizing that people can add to your life and enrich your life is very important. And recognizing that, uh, you know, even if you can do everything yourself, that doesn't mean you should do everything yourself. Now, if you want help, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions where you can explore a lot of these struggles that you experience in relationships as an introvert. And I customize my coaching to your personal report, your own personality, who you are and what you think and what you value. So that allows me to give me you very in-depth feedback and advice based on modern psychology and modern thinkers. On top of that, if you have any advice for the people listening, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. How have you worked through these kinds of issues and how have you learned to, what is something you've learned to appreciate about other people, what other people bring you that adds to your life and your happiness? Step one is really recognizing that other people can add to your life and can enrich your life. And step two is learning to be comfortable opening up and letting other people in, in other areas where you can allow them in, right? Think of if there is any situation or place where you are comfortable letting other people step up. And third, I would say recognize when you have ideals for another person, for a partner that is or goes beyond what is humanly possible, right? So wanting somebody around who is always happy, always in a good mood, always excited, always full of energy, always positive, but also at the same time, never intrudes on your space and always sits in the distance and, you know, is around but does not really intervene in any aspect of your life. That kind of idea, it is a fantasy.
you'll find that real life is often messy and complicated and people are not always perfect but you'll find that people are wonderful even when they're not perfect because of who they are just the way that they are that's it for today thank you so much for listening and see you all in the next video